didn't use the premium gold. That's what I'm talking about. It's gone. Well, then use the hidden arsenal stuff. I don't know. <sighs> no one night stuff it is in. So first things first guys, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons Thank you all so much for your love and support the channel wouldn't be moving on without you guys Thank you all so 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 much and I also want to give a huge huge shout out to metamats.com And I'm giving metamats a huge shout out right now because I want to give you guys this code Okay, you enter in the code Eugene versus Jesus on metamats.com when you check out and you will get 10% off of any mats I'm not even kidding So if you guys want a sweet mat and 10% off of that sweet mat And if you guys want to support the channel then be sure to check out, you know my links to my metamats, my custom line of metamats, all those are down in the description, so be sure to check those out. But now with all of that out of the way, let's get into the actual meat of this video. Let's get into this discussion topic. So I'm going to be talking about gold, okay? I'm going to be talking about how players didn't necessarily like gold. More specifically, players didn't really like premium gold, okay? Um, a lot of players I know didn't really like gold gold either. I, I did because gold, I felt like, came out with a lot of cool reprints. I really liked, you know, the Mizuki reprints back in the day, just regular gold gold if you guys don't remember just gold gold I don't know what else to call it but it was basically just like an ultra rare reprint set but with like a gold border around the cards in other words uh, gold versus premium gold premium gold has like the uh, parallel secret silver lettering but instead of it being silver it's gold and it just looks really ugly I couldn't just say that though I had to make this face seriously I had to make this face <sighs> This is the kind of crap that I see while editing that just annoys the hell out of me. But I'll get more into premium gold in a minute. And when it comes to just gold gold, I think for the most part, players liked that a lot more. I know that I did, you know, like I was saying a minute ago. And I think a lot of the reason is because Konami came out with cool ghost rares and stuff out of, you know, the old gold sets that we all really liked. And I think they did a really good job of uh, reprinting cards in those sets. I just really want to be clear in this video that I'm talking about premium gold and not gold gold. So now that I've said that and that's out of the way, Premium gold was ugly, okay? <laughs> like, the packaging was tackier, the cards looked tackier, they were just ugly as hell. None of us really liked premium gold. I mean, seriously, it got to where we almost didn't want cards to get reprinted because we knew when we got them, they would just be so ugly. I mean, I may be exaggerating just a little bit, but it kind of felt like that for a minute, where it was like, hey, we're gonna reprint something. No, please don't. Just wait a little bit, you know? But premium gold wasn't Konami's only mistake when it comes to a new card rarity. Do you guys remember the Noble Knight boxes with the Platinum Rares? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, those were terrible. Those were the ugliest cards. Some of the ugliest cards I've ever seen. Every time I look at those, it saddens me because it's got like the parallel uh, secret rare text, like the old Game Boy game cards, you know, like anti-spell fragrance, but they just don't have the parallel secrets and they're just all ugly and uh, they're, t they're terrible. It's like, it's such wasted potential. It really, really is just such wasted potential when it comes to those cards. But you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't know what's uglier. Premium gold, platinum rare, that, that platinum rare, or the cards that came out of the Mega Tents a couple years ago, the Tiger King and the Dark Rebellion, like that are silver on the outside, like secret rare all across. Oh my gosh. Guys, if you're not a real vendor, seriously, you're not a real vendor unless you have a stack of everything that I'm talking about that you can't sell. <laughs> I'm not even joking. This isn't a joke. This is like satire. But guys, now that I'm done picking on Konami and making fun of their mistakes and stuff, I mean, they sh seriously should have like looked at their secret rares, super rares, you know, um, ultimate rares, etc. And just been like, hey, we had it right all along. They should have done that, didn't do it, whatever. We forgive them, we would like, we, we forgave them, okay? We forgave them. And we seriously forgive them after Legendary Collection Kaiba, guys, because they did a fantastic job on that box set. Not only do you get all these hand traps reprinted, but you get like all these nostalgic cards, like Blue Eyes White Dragon, of course, Crush Card, Lajin, like all these just amazing, amazing reprints. And um, that's gonna be kind of like the topic, that's like, gonna be like the start of the next half of this video, where I'm gonna be talking about how much Konami really has improved in 2017 you know going into 2018 now they really stepped up their game in my opinion and let's start this off by using legendary collection Kaiba as an example not only did they reprint all of the hand traps you know and uh, other nostalgic cards that I was just talking about but they actually listened to the players and reprinted cards that we needed reprinted like delinquent duo and Beals and Beals before this set actually only had one print which was in premium gold which was causing the price of the card to go up so for Konami to kind of look at card prices how they spike and stuff or at least watch YouTube videos or just listen to the players in general and see, you know, what cards are spiking and know, and just, just them knowing when to reprint cards is what I'm getting at here. 
here is just fantastic. I think that, that, that they need more credit. I think they deserve a lot more credit than what they've been getting. So in other words, guys, I really feel like that Konami with Legendary Collection Kaiba, um, not only did they use this as a cash grab, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, I shouldn't say cash grab. Um, they're using this to make money, don't get me wrong. I mean, they're a business, they sell product, they want to make money, duh. I mean, it's just common sense, duh stuff. But um, they're not doing this just for a cash grab, is what I'm trying to say. I genuinely think that Konami is wanting to reprint all these cards for the players because, you know, like I was just saying, um, they didn't just reprint, you know, all the good hand traps and just say screw it after that. They actually reprinted a lot of other really good cards and cards that we've needed reprinted for a while. But Konami did the same kind of thing when we needed Invoker reprinted back in the day. When Zoo was the best deck, it was a tier zero deck and it was tier zero for way too long, which was a mistake. But that doesn't change the fact that Konami actually saw what was going on and listened to the players. I mean, they didn't listen to us and ban Zoo, which they should have, but at least they reprinted Invoker, you know what I mean? They gave us a uh, Duelist Saga, which not only gave us some really good reprints, but Duelist Saga, uh, to me, kind of marks where Premium Gold kind of got replaced. I mean, in my opinion, that's kind of where gold just bam gone you know what i mean like it just disappeared after that it kind of took the place i mean even the box is about the same size as the premium gold box to me just i mean metaphorically like symbolically everything that was gold going away and that is something i'm very very happy about um, not only do we get gold gone you know away from us those ugly cards far far away from us never to be seen again hopefully never to be seen again but we also got a new kind of ultra rare out of dual saga and it looks amazing the new ultra rares guys like the parallel ultras or like I don't know I just call them shiny ultras that's that's just what they look like to me as ultras but shinier I mean that's literally what they look like but in my opinion guys when I look at dual saga I see a box around about the same size as premium gold and I see it as Konami's way of going hey we get it those cards were ugly you didn't like them but you want reprints we get it so here's this box with better ultra rares buy it. And initially when Dual Saga came out, guys, I kind of thought it was a fluke. I'm not going to lie. I seriously looked at that and I was like, okay, they're just coming out with this kind of garbage in between set just to, you know, come out with it and reprint Invoker. I kind of looked at it that way for a minute. I'm not going to lie. I kind of looked at it that way until um, Light's Revenge came out. When Light's Revenge came out, Battles of Legend, Light's Revenge, that set debatably is the best reprint set of all time. I'm not even kidding, guys. If you look up all the amazing reprints that are in Light's Revenge, I'm sure I don't even have to tell you to look them up. I'm sure you already have all the cards memorized because you know it's a great set. It was fantastic. So long story short, after Light's Revenge came out, I was like, hey, this is not a fluke. Konami's really doing a better job reprinting cards. And then fast forward, I mean, they've done a really good job reprinting cards, you know, since then. But um, fast forward until right now. I mean, they obviously have the OTS packs and stuff like that where they reprint cards. But seriously, fast forward until now with Legendary Collection Kaiba, and they're still doing awesome reprints for us. I think that that is an amazing sign that Konami actually truly, truly seriously has been listening to us this entire time. They trashed an entire rarity for us, guys. They seriously did. And I think that gold is going to stay gone. And I think gold being gone might be kind of a metaphor here for you're going to get reprints and you're going to get better reprints. And we actually like you as customers keep coming to us. And I think there's going to be a lot of players out there that are going to hear me say that and they're going to be like, no, Konami is terrible. They're evil, blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. They're just, they're just a business like any other business. And if you don't understand that and you don't understand the concept of money, then you have a whole other problem. I'm sorry. I just kind of wanted to stand here and make this video and point out my observations leading to Legendary Collection Kaiba. I really feel like the Konami has been making a genuine effort, not only with their past couple of ban lists, but with their products as well to really improve the state of the game. And for that guy, Guys, I have to give them a huge round of applause. Thank you so much for listening. No, seriously, I'm not, this is not a joke. I seriously think that Konami has been listening and they have been improving. Not everything happens at once, guys. You know, all at once, Rome wasn't built in a day. But I truly feel like the Konami has been doing a better job. They did a better job in 2017. And I feel like already with the start of 2018, they're doing a really great job diversifying Yu-Gi-Oh! And just keeping us interested in the game and everything else that they should be doing. I think that they're doing it and they're doing it well. And you guys are probably going to think I'm a sellout or something. And uh, that's fine. You guys could think I'm a sellout. And um, just to be more of a sellout, let's get this video over 10 minutes, shall we? Okay. Subscribe! <laughs>